a new project called Lord of the Rings Finance recently hard rugged most of its users, stealing around $185,000. Not only did they steal the tokens on the platform, but they directly pulled tokens from users' wallets if a user approved their contract. So how did Lord of the Rings Finance do this? And how can we avoid situations like this in the future? In this video, I'm going to share what I found out by digging into this rug and give some recommendations on how we can be more prepared against similar scams in the future. Let's dive in. So how did Lord of the Rings Finance steal 185,000 in a matter of hours? Well, if you look at their expertly devised strategy, you'll find out that they had many different things going for them. First of all, they entered the market on July 19, 2021. This is a period of time when gaming NFTs on DeFi were at an all-time high, offering a play-to-earn project with fun NFTs, interesting gameplay, and nice graphics. Altogether, they hit every trendy hype button people were looking for. Their second strategy was their website design. Right now, if you try to go to the website at lor.finance, you'll be met with the 404 page. However, if you do use a tool like Wayback Machine, you can find that there is an archive of their webpage. Here's what their webpage looked like before they rugged. As you can see, there are a lot of colorful graphics, this nice text that says LOR, Adventure in the Fantasy World of Middle Earth. As you can see, this website was very Lord of the Rings oriented and drew in a crowd of people interested in games and movies alike. You can even go down here and see the different types of characters they had planned from elf, men, orc, and dwarf. They even had different weapons that you could buy, such as swords, axes, and knives. Of course, all these colorful graphics were just a disguise for what was underneath, which was nothing. In fact, one of their strategies was implementing a nice team page, which you could see by scrolling all the way down to the bottom of the web page. Now, in this version of the website, we can't see the pictures, at least my browser is not letting me, but obviously they had a supposedly docs team, and you can see even their LinkedIn pages. So if we take a look at the chief executive officer's LinkedIn page, we'll be met with this guy named Donovan Ramsey. Now, Donovan Ramsey's LinkedIn profile looks to be well connected. There's 183 connections. There's a contact at DonovanRamsey at gmail.com. If you go down to his experience section, you can even see that he has many different companies that he's worked for in the past, including companies in Ukraine and in Singapore. And he's even graduated from a university in Paris. So yeah, this guy definitely looks like he has a legit LinkedIn profile. However, if you do take a quick Google search of Donovan Ramsey, you won't really find much on this Donovan Ramsey. Sure, you'll find a guy named Donovan X Ramsey, but what about the Donovan Ramsey that is CEO of Lord of the Rings Finance? Well, we can Google his name with Pharaoh's production, right? So that'll probably give us something. Except the only thing that we can actually find is the same LinkedIn page. There's nothing else mentioned with Donovan Ramsey in this Pharaoh's production company. If you scroll down to his activity page, we can even see all of his activity that he's posted. Surely he must be active, right? And the only thing we can see is one post a week ago, and that's about it. Nothing else. So obviously, Lord of the Rings Finance created the entire team out of thin air. Or at least, these people are not actually part of Lord of the Rings Finance. On their webpage, we can also see that they listed a ton of different partners, from Binance Smart Chain, CoinMarketCap, even Ethereum. That's kind of odd, but however, these partners looked pretty legit because it's on their website. There was nothing wrong, it seemed. However, if you did some research, then you probably could have seen that they did not actually have these partners. We did try to do our own research, but we could not find that there was proof at all for any of these partners. So it seemed that some of these logos were created with a basic design program and they did not actually exist. So here's the key thing. Don't be fooled by a good looking website and graphics as people can write or design anything they want online. It's up to you the user to figure out the truth by investigating it yourself, even if these companies are real, as it is so easy to fake a logo or just claim a partnership that doesn't exist. Always ask for official announcements or statements regarding claimed partnerships. Another feature of Lord of the Rings Finance was they were pretty good at marketing. 
The Telegram group featured 13,000 members and it was created on July 19 of 2021 at the time of writing. So the group has been muted once people suspected something was wrong. So even though they had 13,000 members, a team can also always buy bots to join the Telegram group to make it appear that there are a lot of members when there aren't actually that many. Lord of the Rings Finance even offered one incentive, which was a free loot box. This free loot box actually gave an NFT to new users, and it was actually safe from the start. So Lord of the Rings Finance boosted users' confidence and trust in their project by offering this free loot box. This gave users the confidence to spend more money and interact with their other contracts contracts that could have been very very malicious this rug involves two different contracts the first one is the ido contract so when interacting with a lord of the rings ido contract users encountered an approval similar to this screenshot right here during the approval process the users could approve a certain amount of bnb however this approval contract said they can spend pretty much an unlimited amount of BUSD from users' addresses. Now you can kind of see where this kind of goes wrong. Generally, trusted yield farms do have a large amount of spending that they can spend from users' wallets. However, in this case, this yield farm was not trusted at all. In this IDO contract, you can see a user here spent 50,000 BUSD to obtain 500,000 Lord of the Rings finance tokens. Just a few minutes later, a new wallet called the Lord of the Rings IDO contract drained the entirety of BOSD from the wallet, which approved the Lord of the Rings IDO contract. Now, the second way the Lord of the Rings finance stole users' funds was through their premium loot box contract. As you can see in this screenshot right here, once a user interacts with the free loot box contract, they are shown a screen which offers them a premium chest for 10 BUSD, which tempts the user with the chance to get a randomized higher tier reward. When they purchase one of these premium chests, the user is asked to give approval to the contract to spend an almost unlimited amount of BUSD once more. Similar to the IDO contract, the loot box contract is also unverified, so we don't know which specific function they called in the contract to drain BUSD from user wallets. It could be something as basic as a transfer or migrator function. Finally, how do we avoid scams like this? First of all, never trust a project just on the website, the graphics, or the nice colorful stickers. Anyone can hire a good graphics team to create something nice looking. That doesn't mean the developers behind the project are actually trustworthy. Second of all, if you're new to a project, you should create a burner wallet and see the contracts you're going to interact with. Always start by depositing only a small amount or set the permissions to only spend the amount you want to. Third, you should never interact with unverified contracts. Unverified contracts means anything can be inside and no one knows exactly what is inside the contract. Since it's so easy to verify contracts on most explorers, the only reason a project will keep their contracts unverified is to prevent the public from knowing what their contract encodes which is usually the sign of a scam waiting to happen. Number four, you should always read the audit report. Audits are just reports of findings within the code and most audits only check for code functionality. Read the report thoroughly and understand the risks you are taking because audits are just the first line of defense in preventing scams. Number five is you should always check what you are giving approval to. Not everything is as bleak as it looks like and these contracts, no matter how malicious they are, can only drain tokens a user has approved. That's why it's so important to always check what your approvals are before you agree to sign a contract. Imagine you're actually signing a contract with your name. Anything you sign, the contract is legally binding. So keep that in mind when you're about to approve a contract. The last and final tip I can give for you is always revoke approvals for contracts you're no longer using. You can use various smart contract allowance checkers to revoke your permissions that you give yield farm contracts. If you've forgotten about a yield farm and then you've aped out of it, you're not completely safe until you revoke all your permissions. A rug contract can still drain tokens directly from your wallet weeks or even months after a yield farm, after you've long forgotten about them. To get a better idea on how to revoke approvals, check out the link in the description where I'll leave an article for you. And that's it for me. I hope you learned a little bit about these scams in the DeFi space and to always stay vigilant no matter what you're doing. 
Hopefully you don't ape in into these farms even though they have colorful graphics or if they're really cool and then they also remind you of Lord of the Rings or some other cool movie. That doesn't exactly mean that they're safe and it's always up for you to do your own research to make sure that the crazy degen farm that you're aping into is actually safe. And as always, make sure to join our Telegram group where you can ask any question that you like, stay on top of your DeFi safety, or just join our amazing community. Have an amazing day, guys, and stay safe out there.